Without further ado, the first team, YZAG. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nan Zhang. I'm an assistant professor of computer science at George Washington University. Uh, this is my teammate, Georgia Zhou, also a PhD student in computer science. We are the team YZAG. And our vision is to build the guru for analysts. What exactly do we mean by that? So we all know Google. This is Google's interface. You go there, enter a keyword, for example, a product name. What Google will do is to go to its backend database, searches it, and returns you a few documents. Now imagine the same kind of interface for YZ. Only this time, we are searching for web data sources thousands of times larger than Google's. And instead of giving you just a few documents, we give you analytical answers, analytics that can be directly used by analysts to make decisions. I know it's very abstract, so what I'm going to do next is to give you an intuitive demonstration, a proof of concept demo of YZ, and shows you what it is capable of doing. This is the interface of YZ. Let's try entering, let's say, iPad. What YZ is doing, it is tapping into a large number of web data sources online and then try to estimate the demographic information of people who expressed interest on the term you just entered online. In this case, let's have a look at what it says about people who are interested in iPad. We can see that it shows that people of 25 to 35 years old are most interested in YZ, sorry, in the iPad. And the occupation perspective, art, entertainment, legal, computer are the most just, uh, professions most interested in it. And also, if you look at income, then the higher income a person has, the more interest this person will have on iPad. How accurate is the answer? So let's try some more specific terms so we can have a look. What I'm searching here is uh, Mathematica, which is a scientific computing software that I use every now and then. It's for mathematicians, computer scientists, engineers to do scientific computing applications. In this case, what we can see here is YZ again searches for these web data sources and turn out science, computer, engineer being the top three professions interested in this term consistent with our intuitions. Also in this case, you can see that the age distribution is a little older than iPad, saying that professionals, you know, uh, mathematicians, scientists, are most interested in this term. Of course, YZ is by no means limited to just technical stuff. Let's search for something else, like uh, Libitor, which is a drug for controlling blood cholesterol levels. So in this particular case, what we can see, for example, uh, popularity across U.S., we can see that East Coast has much higher interest on Libitor than West Coast in Alaska, seemingly indicating a difference on health situations you know, in different regions. Now, if we look at occupation, healthcare and social services, rightfully, are the top two professions interested in it. Age, well, older folks are more interested than younger folks, understandably. Income, very interestingly, there's a strong correlation between income and interest on Libitor. The higher income you have, the lower interest you are going to have on Libitor, similarly indicating there's a correlation between income and blood cholesterol levels. So, so much for the demo of YZ. Let me go back. I know I have, I left a lot of questions unanswered. For example, I said the, uh, Data sources we can tap into can be thousands of times larger than Google's. How is that possible? Didn't someone just say, you know, whichever doesn't exist at Google doesn't exist at all? Is that true? Well, not so fast. In fact, if you look at web data sources, a very large number of them, for example, e-commerce websites like Amazon and eBay, they have a huge database hidden behind its web interface. So Google cannot tap into these databases and crawl everything from it. This is the so-called deep web. 
Many other categories of such databases exist. For example, social networks, government data, other search engines, backend repositories, etc. In fact, you name it, a huge number of such data repositories. In fact, a recent study just found that such data in the deep web is believed to be 1,000 to 5,000 times larger than what Google is capable of crawling, which is the surface web. It is basically saying that when you are searching at Google, you are searching for the tip of the iceberg right there. And what YZ is trying to do is to analyze the huge iceberg under the water. But the natural question following up is, why do we tell? How exactly did we get all the demographic information that I just showed you from all these data under the water? Now, a key observation here to answer this question is that the deep web was not created by one person, one company, or one organization. It was created by you and me. We entered our reviews at Amazon.com. We purchased items at eBay, and it is our data which constitutes many of the government data sets that are available in the deep web. The deep web represents the wisdom of the crowd, and what you just saw in the demo is just a very small example of it, which is the demographic information of people interested in the term that you just entered. Of course, given such wisdom of proud available in the deep web and a huge amount of data in there, it would just seem crazy that nobody has ever looked at it before. In fact, there has been quite a few efforts before trying to get analytics from one or a few data sources or even trying to surface the deep web. However, none of them really scaled to thousands of, thousands of times larger than Google. What happened? What exactly is the technical innovation behind YZ? I'll yield to Zhuo Jie, who is going to explain the, briefly explain the technical part. Okay. So, hi. Previous efforts has been made to build huge data center to crowd deep web and generate very accurate results. And as we are targeting more and more resources and the triggers, the data center is becoming larger and larger. Of course, it takes a lot of time to build such a system, both in software and hardware development. And it needs a lot of human resources, like developers and managers, to maintain the daily operation. And of course, it costs a lot of money. Obviously, it does not scale. And even Google could not crowd the entire deep web. And it, it is not possible for each company to build its own data center. This is where WiseX steps in. WiseX is going to replace the data center with just a laptop. Of course, we are not going to store all the data in a laptop, but with just using the computing power of a laptop, we are going to shrink the large data resources into very small but highly representative samples, which enables us to generate the accurate results. So how accurate we are talking about? Our formal experiments have shown that we can reach 95% of accuracy over 1 million files within just 30 seconds. And this is why WISAC could be the next Google for aggregate information search. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia, for the explanation from the technical part. Now I want to take a few seconds explaining the credentials of our, of our team. So we have already uh, filed three patents from this uh, technology. This technology was uh, sponsored. Um, the demo you just saw involves research sponsored by four National Science Foundation grants, uh, with me being the principal investigator and totaling one, uh, more than $1 million. And, uh, also, we published uh, five papers in the last uh, three, four years in SIGMOD, which is the premier publication venue for database research. This is from the technical side. From the business side, we were very fortunate to be part of the G-World, the GW Entrepreneur's uh, Roundtable program, and received a lot of extremely valuable advice from entrepreneurs, uh, from um, um, attorneys, uh, financial experts, as well as accountants. I was also very lucky to be one of the first teams in the National Science Foundation Innovation Core Program, which uh, uh, 
basically put together scientists and engineers who received the National Science Foundation funding, uh, funding together and uh, uh, basically a boot camp that uses the lean start startup approach to perform customer development process. It was led by a seasoned entrepreneurs and venture capitalists. We actually did a lot of customer interviews in the iCrow program, more than 50 of them. It is from these customer interviews that we found there are three value propositions of YZ that they most need. They need the most. They are, YZ is able to analyze deep web data sources that they cannot analyze before. Number two, deep web is, a YZ is extremely fast. Georgia just gave you some concrete numbers from our published papers. Number three, our approach is extremely scalable with extremely low cost. These are three key value propositions. It is also through these customer interviews that we found three customer segments to have the most interest in our technology because of the three value propositions. They are the intelligence community, hedge fund managers, and market research or business intelligence community. So why do they need YZ? Because of their pain point right now. Here's their pain. All of them want to take advantage of the large number of deep web data sources. They have different interests, different sources, but they all want the information. However, none of their executives wants to look at each and every data source and read all those documents. What they want are nice visualizations, pretty features, and summary of the data that they can directly use to support decisions. But there's a huge gap between these data sources and analytical information. So how exactly are they trying to solve this problem now? They try to solve it, at least according to our interviews with quite a few customers in these segments, by hiring people. You hire junior analysts to read these data sources kind of randomly, find some documents, read them, write reports. Their reports are still too long, so you have senior managers read junior managers, junior analysts' reports, and then write shorter reports. So hopefully, by the time the report reaches the CEO, it's going to be short enough to make decisions. The problem with this? Too much time. Too much human resources required, and too high of a cost. We would like to disrupt these markets by using one generic platform, the same, gen the same platform that you just saw in the demo, to automatically analyze this large number of data sources and generate analytical data that can be used to support the visualizations. Of course, the demo you saw just now does not really go into millions of data sources. Instead, we just target a few generic data sources today, like social networks, U.S. Census Bureau data, and uh, search engines backend purposes. However, it is extremely easy for us to add additional data sources to our system. Our experience with it has been it takes about half an hour to one hour to add one, another, one additional data source into our system. So it is highly generic and extremely low cost to customize our system to these different requirements of different customer segments. So are these customers willing to pay for the service? Is this a huge market? Our understanding from our studies is yes. The financial data service market, as well as the market research business intelligence market, is each a $10 billion per year market. Well, we don't know the exact number for the intelligence community because of the nature of it. Our estimation, our educated guess, is it's roughly $10 billion and above as well. And what's the price of existing systems that offer not similar but you know, uh, comparable uh, services? Existing systems that do not actually go to the web data sources, but instead work on their local data and generate analytics. We did studies. And for sure, it's not you know, thousands of dollars per year consumer-facing systems. They are hundreds of thousands of dollars per license per year, business-oriented systems. And based on such price estimations, our initial target market on just the market research slash business intelligence part is about $100 million a year. 
Finally, this is my last slide, and I would like to conclude it with the business canvas of YZ. So for those of you who are not very familiar with Business Canvas, it is a lean startup approach to basically outline the most important characteristics of business underlying YZ. I would like to direct your attention to three parts of it. First, the various types of customers that we can, interest, we can deal with. And sure, basically just a summary of which I already described. Great, thank you. Let me open it up to questions from the judges. Shoka. Uh, it's amazing technology, but uh, each map, each technology has a limitation. Can you point out what are limitation of your technology and why is that? That's a great question. So our technology was built on one focus, which is to support analytical applications. Which means we, uh, like Zhuojie just said, we get samples from these data sources. We support extremely accurate analytical information. However, we do not actually crawl all the data into our system because it's impossible to do so efficiently. What it means is you cannot go into our system and find a single document on the web that includes what you just entered. Our focus is not the same as Google. We do not support individual record search. Our focus is on big picture analytical information. That is the limitation of our technology. Can you improve it? Um, let, me, uh, uh, let me address it this way. So this technology is built on the sticking point that the data in the deep web is thousands of times larger than Google's repository. They're simply impossible, both from a time perspective and from a cost perspective, to crawl all these data together, indexing all of them so as to support individual record search. And also, what we find, which we found from asking these potential customers is they are not really interested in finding one specific document, but rather the big picture analytical information. So we currently do not have the plan to go beyond analytical information to try to enable individual searches. That's just not the focus of YZ. Thank you very much. Thank you. A quick question. First, uh, great, great presentation. Uh, why wouldn't Google or Yahoo move to protect this space themselves? I mean, they're big balance sheet companies, have the wherewithal financially and from a human resource to, to go after this themselves and get into this deep web uh, data service. So from a sustained uh, com uh, competitive advantage perspective, we, our technology is protected uh, from the, uh, from, uh, as intellectual properties. So uh, that's an advantage that we have. In terms of answering your question of why Google or Yahoo are not trying to do this, they were. Google actually launched a effort called Surfacing the Deep Web just three years ago. The idea was they are trying to crawl all the data from the surface, from the deep web, surfacing them to the surface web, so they can all be indexed by Google's search engines. Well, we are not hearing about it too much today. I think the reason of that is because when you have 1,000 to 5,000 times larger than Google's already huge data repositories, the current existing technology just made it impossible for you to do it efficiently. And also, with all the data sources on the web trying to protect themselves, they do not want you to actually get everything from their backend databases. That's another reason why it usually takes an extremely long amount of time for you to crawl just one single repository. And that's why you know, their traditional approach does not work, and we have the competitive advantage on the new technology which focuses on analytical information. Any other questions? Um, how do you decide which data sources you want to add? I know you said you can't have everything. How do you determine which um, industries you want to target? Is it based on the end user? Uh, yes, we believe so. For example, as I showed a few slides uh, before this, Different customer segments actually have different requirements, like intelligence community want to monitor the news articles, TVs. Uh, hedge funds want to monitor financial data sources, SEC. Uh, the market research wants to monitor e-commerce and social networks. So they all have their different interests. I think a very unique and important point of YZ is we have a generic platform that can very easily, we can just plug and play a data source into our system. As I said, it takes half an hour, one hour, to plug into a new data source. That, I think, is uh, um, 
our, our vision for this going forward is we need to, of course, we have customer acquisition cost, as you saw from the business canvas, which means we need to understand the need of these customers, and then we build their data sources into our YZ system. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.